How do Nords communicate with each other without speaking? Well, they use Norse code. What's going on, YouTube? It's the weekend. We're inside the Hollow City, inside a cold harbor, to go over our first of two weekly vendors. And we are trying to talk to Zanil here. We're uh, having some technical difficulties, apparently. Okay. Okay. All right. Zanil is closed, everybody. Sorry about that. And inside this vendor, we have, you guessed it, Apocrypha Statues. Uh, you probably didn't guess that because I did not think that that's what we would be getting this week. Now, we talk about these items for a few reasons, one of which is should you buy these for yourself and should you buy them to resell later? Statues are a good investment, and I generally think that they're worth it. I believe both of these new Apocrypha statues, this is the first time they're appearing in-game, and 22.5 thousand is a very weird denomination for this to be worth. Granted, it doesn't look very good, but it is new. This Mephala statue for 25000 is a decent investment as well. And I say this as somebody who's bought all of these statues to put in their home. Usually you can sell statues later for a decent profit, but the big thing will be is do you need any of these for yourself? Now, a statue base for 2500 is a great investment, especially if you're on PC where inflation is through the roof. On console, it could still be a decent investment. You could probably resell this for five to 10000 in the future. But the people who need it are probably going to stock up on them now, so you're not going to be able to sell them very quickly. I am very curious how these statues are going to do in the future, just because they look so goofy. And I kind of like them. But let's move on. And before we jump into the second vendor here, this is just a quick reminder to just quickly subscribe. I don't do long, drawn-out intros. If you wouldn't mind hitting the subscribe button and hitting the like button, that'd be much appreciated. But now, we're inside the Cyrodiil Northern High Rock Gate to go over our second golden vendor and we start off with veiled inheritance when you interrupt an enemy you gain 516 weapon and spell damage for 15 seconds and your bash attacks deal 516 more damage very weird combination of things i guess it could make sense obviously because bashing and whatnot but this set actually used to be good and i like to mention that in these videos because oftentimes uh, especially when I started making economic videos, a lot of people would say, Jake, you're recommending that I sell something like Mother's Sorrow or Plague Doctor. Are those sets good? And I would say no. And people would say, well, why do you recommend that resell it then? It's because people buy it. People will look at online guides from a year or two years ago. This nerf, I think, was only a year or so ago, maybe two years ago. This is an Overland set that existed in the base game. And it used to be really good. I think it used to give 400 spell damage, but there was a, a chance that it would occur, but there was no 15 second cooldown. And so this was a pretty good set for PvP. Now it's a form of shadow of itself. So you may see people recommend this. Not very good anymore. Next up from the Vaults of Madness, Worm Cult grants 145 Magicka recovery to you and 11 other group members. And this persists through death, which is good because your group is going to be dead if you're running this. Now, are there situations where potentially a set like this could be helpful? Sure. Do you need to A, buy it in its golden version? No. B, are you going to be using this very often? No. And there's a very simple reason for that. One, 145 Magicka for a golded out set is almost nothing. You could give your teammates so many other buffs on either your healer, your tank, or maybe even putting a support set on a DD if you're doing something really specific. You're just not going to use Worm Cult, like realistically, unfortunately. And unless you're doing something very specific, this set is useless to you, unfortunately. Next up, though, from City of Ash, you have Sunderflame. When you deal damage with a fully charged heavy attack, you deal an additional 11,690 flame damage over 10 seconds, and you apply Minor Breach, reducing the physical and spell resistance by 2974. This is an interesting set if I was to recommend this to a new player. I've tried this on heavy attack builds, and I found that it's actually pretty good. And heavy attack builds are some of the most popular set combinations in the game. So from that aspect, you probably would think, okay, well, I could just go grab this. And because it's a jewelry piece from a dungeon, you're saving yourself potentially farming. To get that jewelry piece you know that would take you for forever 
I've even seen people use this for PvP because get minor breach is good. It's easy to, to proc with heavy attacks. And you can build this into other sort of flamey-o type builds with Dragon Knight. So overall, Sunderflame is a pretty slept on set. And I say this too because Sunderflame is one of the best options if you don't have access to DLCs, right? Sometimes people forget when we're reviewing sets that there is a portion of the community that doesn't have access to the newest dungeons or the newest zones. But sometimes it's nice to highlight sets that have existed since the base game that are still good because you watching this right now may think this could be a really good set for me. I don't have access to ESO plus. I don't have access to certain DLCs. This is a great option for me. And that's why we do these videos and put as much detail into the set reviews as we do. Next up is another Overland set. This one comes from Glenumbra. When you take damage, you generate 6 ultimate. This effect can occur once every 5 seconds. This set was actually buffed from 5 to 6. Is it good though? And the answer to that is not really. There are people who build ultimate regen builds. Because um, realistically, the problem with this set is, is you can get ultimate regeneration from so many other places that you don't need a full 5P set to do that for you. However, it's 2, 3, and 4 pair pretty well for PvP content. And being able to stack you know, heroism pots and other ways of getting heroism with this can mean that you can get your ultimate very quickly. Does that mean that it's necessarily a great set? No, but I would say that you could make a good build with this set. Should you buy it as its golden version? It, probably not. It doesn't even drop, you know, from a dungeon like Sunderflame does. You could probably buy it relatively cheaply. But it is cool to note that this is actually an okay set. If you wanted to do this, Dragon Knights could be a good way to build this in. Wardens also benefit from getting their ultimates back pretty quickly. Even a Necromancer, you could probably build something pretty interesting with this. But overall, that's what I would use. Next up, we have another easy set to get from Darkshade Caverns 1. We pretty much have the cupcake run here for set difficulty to normally acquire, and you can get yourself the Sentinel set. When you heal yourself or an ally, you summon a Dwemer Spider that heals for 1055 and restores 121 magicka and stamina to you and your allies within 5 meters every 1 second for 8 seconds. Notably, this actually gives more magicka and stamina back than the Veiled Inheritance set. But to its credit, you know, this only, you know, does it to the allies within five meters of you. So that's like 15 feet. You know, you got to be careful. They're too far away. Um, but overall, this is a pretty good healing set. This is a base game set. It's good for sustain. Um, it's not, it's probably outside the top five support sets realistically. Generally, support sets need to do more than heal and this does because it heals and it gives you resources back to you and your allies which is good but generally most groups if you're looking at support buffs you want unnamed damage buffs or really hard to get buffs healing can be okay but it's not something that you're normally going to see very often a uh, 15 second proc but lasting eight seconds is good i would say especially for a base game set this is like a a minus support set and just to qualify A minus, that includes having an S tier and an F tier, not like A, like the US educational system A minus. I'm thinking like an S tier, A tier, B tier, you know, et cetera, et cetera tier. This would be like right on the very end of the A tiers where I would put it. Next up is Vildrith, which is exciting because now we have something to talk about that's a little bit fun. This normally comes from Cradle of Shadows. And you may think to yourself, okay, Jake, is the two-piece good? But this is the fun part. The real question is, is, is the one-piece good? And the one-piece gives 124 weapon and spell damage. It's one of the only one-piece monster sets to do that. So if you're wearing a mythical and you're in a PvP situation, you may just want a one-piece that just gives you weapon and spell damage. And then, boom, got your weapon and spell damage. You slap on Beeldrift and you are good to go. It's just that simple. And with Undaunted Keys costing 8 now, granted, pledges do give you more, but this may be worth to buy the helmet just to get something where you need just the one-piece helmet as opposed to farming Cradle of Shadows on Veteran, which is a kind of annoying final boss fight. Now, it's two-piece is also good. When you deal damage, you have a 20% chance to spawn three disease spores in front of you after one second that deal 9,441 disease damage to enemy hit 
It's going to occur once every eight seconds and scales off your weapon and spell damage. Notably, the sets that I'm using right now don't give like the highest weapon and spell damage. So you can make this a little bit higher also than 9,441. So in theory, every eight seconds, you could have a 30k damage proc. That's not too terrible. There are obviously better DPS sets, especially ones that don't do AoE, ones that are more single target, but you're also doing you're doing a bit of an AoE here, which could be pretty good. Uh, so overall, that's actually a pretty good one to use, especially if you're trying to do arenas and you're limited on the sets that you can get. Obviously, if you want single target damage, it's you know it's better off to run Zons. Um, but if you're in a situation where you're making a solo build, for example, this is pretty good because it's going to deal damage to things around you, which could be very helpful. Because oftentimes solo content, you struggle from doing damage to a lot of things around you. A lot of people do great damage to everything that's, you know, like if you're attack of one person or one group boss thing, that's fantastic. Sometimes those solo builds struggle with the enemies around you. And this is a good mixture of being able to do both pretty efficiently. But everyone, thank you guys so much again for watching. Bit of a longer introduction slash discussions on this video. Hope that was okay. But I also wanted to see, uh, cause I'm making a video where we do a meta set breakdown for both PVP and PVE content, as well as solo and support type content. We use a uh, bit of a new type of uh, ongoing series where every patch we talk about, you know, what are the best sets to use. Uh, for each class or for each type of content i don't know how i want to break it up so if you don't mind helping me out do you think that pvp should be its own video do you think dps should be its own video do you think solo should be its own video should i do one really long video with chapters what do you guys think would be best and as always we're doing our three giveaway drawings all you need to do to enter is leave a comment comments below just answer that question i asked you second thing is just be subscribed slash follow on twitch and twitter and the third thing, look for a hidden word to be flashed upon the screen. If you're the first person to comment that word, you will win. Thank you guys so much again for watching, and I'll catch you later. Bye, guys. You better remember to like and subscribe to Jake Clips. Or oh, you should. I might have to pluck your eyes if you don't. Or, better yet, I'll skip rope with your entrails. Do it now. Subscribe. Ta-ta. Off with you.